right, welcome back to another episode of Anyone Can Paint. Let me show you what we have going to be going on today. We got a brand new painting started. Uh, this one is inspired on a trip that I made out in Colorado up in the Rocky Mountains, and this one's going to be called Mountain Meadow. Uh, back here is going to be obviously a mountain range. You can probably figure that out. And here's going to be a, a layer of meadows, and we're going to have distant pine trees, and they're going to get progressively larger. So it really kind of helps with that look of, of that it's going away. Um, pine trees are going to get a little larger here. They're going to be on a little bit of a hill. This is going to cast a shadow. We're going to have the light coming in from the left. And of course, this is going to be in the foreground area, and this will be a trail that goes back, and it's going to go down the hill and it'll kind of meander back in. So it kind of helps lead your eye kind of through the painting. So we'll go ahead and get started. Um, we're going to use the uh, get started with the extra large fan brush or flat brush, bristle brush. And we're going to get some white and a little bit of blue and a little bit. This is maybe something that you can do at home. Sometimes uh, you think you grab a little bit of blue and it ends up being a lot. Instead of painting that whole thing in, just kind of spread this out a little bit. Then you can go down and grab some more white and it's a little bit easier to thin that down a little bit because you don't have blue every single spot. Now I put the sketch on um, with Vine Charcoal, V-I-N-E, we've talked about that before. And I kind of like to do that not only for television, but when I paint for myself. And the, and the, the benefit to that is that you can kind of get all the elements in the painting that you want. And you can make sure that things are balanced and you have things primarily where you want them to be. Um, nice thing about the charcoal is that if you put something on that you don't like, you can just simply wipe it off with paper towel. And you can just redo it. I'm just going to get some more white just to kind of thin this out. And I'm kind of painting over the edge of those mountains because if you paint right down to them, then sometimes you get a patchy look as opposed to a look that's overlapping. And you, you always want to make sure you get that look that's overlapping. So, again, that was just to kind of get a plan of attack. And, uh, you know, when you go back to put the mountains on, if it's not exact, it's not going to be a, a big deal. And we'll put some fluffy clouds in this a little bit later when that paint dries. So I did want it on the on the bluer side, but just not really dark, dark blue. I'm just going to grab a little bit more blue here. Darken this up a bit. And you can see I'm just painting right over the edge of that. And that vine charcoal, too, is, is obviously, you can paint right over it, and it doesn't affect your paint. Um, you'll never know it was there. And I'm just kind of blending this so it's pretty equal with the thickness of the paint. And you can see that I just didn't really put a lot into this. You can see some light and some dark and different values of blue, which kind of helps make the, the sky look interesting as opposed to just being flat. All right, uh, we're not going to clean out the brush. And we're going to put in the, uh, let's go ahead and clean out the brush. Now what we're going to do is we're going to switch to a different size brush. And I think what we're going to do is we'll go to the medium flat bristle brush. Remember to get those wet before you put in the paint. We're going to do the underpainting for the mountain. Now, as uh, this is one of the first times we've done a mountain, or we haven't done one in a long time, but I like to throw this in and just really kind of mix the colors right on the canvas because then you get some color changes. You get a little bit of areas where it's a little bit more blue, some that's a little bit more brown. And it looks a little bit more natural as opposed to blending it on your palette and putting up one flat color. And there are some benefits to doing it this way too because when you go to highlight it, you can start looking for brush strokes or for little color changes. And a lot of times you can put your highlights on those and it really helps to make it look three-dimensional again because you've got some different colors in there. So I'm just going to go right down to the palette, grab some blue and grab some brown. And you can see I just got that right on my brush. And we're going to go up to the canvas, and we're just going to throw this on. Now I'm going to come up here, and I'm going to shape this. Now this is going to lose some of its intensity because the sky that we just put in is still wet. Now one of the, the hints about mountains, especially the shape of them, is that I sometimes see people in class. I'm going to go down and grab some more color. You can stay right on the canvas if you want. Uh, in classes that I do, um, when, when we're doing mountains, they come up and they kind of make really straight edges, so they kind of look pyramidish, 
and mountains really aren't like that. So you want to kind of make your outside edges a, a bit irregular so it looks like there's some ruggedness to them and it just tends to make them look a little bit more natural and realistic. We'll bring this up. And hopefully you can see these color changes. You can see areas where it's a little bit lighter, blue, darker. It's got some blue and brown mix. You can see some brown in there. And I just don't over blend these out. I kind of like those to be in there. And again, when we get to the highlighting stage, I'll show you how that benefits, especially if you just throw this in loose. Um, I'm just grabbing a little bit more blue and brown, and I'll be right back. Yeah, I'm just kind of twisting and turning my brush sometimes, just again to get some just some irregular shapes. And then this is going to kind of go off to the side. We're going to have some larger pine trees there, which will cover that corner. I'm just going to grab more color and I'll be right back. And this is okay if you put this in a little bit thicker. And it just kind of goes out to nothing. And I've often talked about this too. I like to paint in the shapes and objects of whatever we're doing a little bit larger than what I'm going to need. Because I know that in the past when I tried to paint it exactly the size that I needed, oftentimes it ended up being wrong. And then I'd have to go back and say, man, I wish that I had painted that a little bit larger, a little bit further down on the canvas, because now I'm kind of stuck with what I've got. So if you paint it lower, knowing that you're going to be painting up over the edge, it kind of gives you some, a little bit of benefit. I'm just going to grab a little white. Again, because this paint's dark, or it's still wet, you can just show a few more little value changes. And it just kind of breaks that up. Again, if you just do this really loose, you'll be able to take advantage of some of these brush strokes. There. Now I'm going to clean out the brush. In fact, what I think I'm going to do, just to show that the next step, so it's a little bit easier for you to see, because this is going to be some dark on dark. You know how we always do the underpainting darker, and then you bring up your highlights and things. Um, oil artists do the same thing. We always start dark and work light. I'm going to lighten this bottom area up a, just a little bit more, just so you can see this next step. And I'm just grabbing some white, and again, it doesn't stay white because the paint is still wet that we just applied on there. there. It's lighter but not tons. Now it'll just be so we can see the next color a little bit easier. And I'm going to clean that out. All right, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go um, to our large flat bristle brush. And we're now going to start putting in some of the underpainting for the actual meadow itself. And this is going to be down at the base of the mountain um, and then we'll just start working our way up to where our foreground is and this will be the foreground again is going to be like you're on the hill and you can see down into this this meadow or this valley a bit um, i'm just going to go into some blue and green this is going to be the underpainting for the uh, for the land and again i just grabbed blue and green right on the brush and i'm going to blend this on the canvas because it's not important that this is one flat color and we'll go right up to the canvas and we'll start throwing this on now the area where the mountain and this ground meet, I'm going to put in my first layers of some trees that are further away. Now we've talked about this many, many times. I'm just going to grab more color and be right back. So when I leave, that's all I'm doing. Um, and this is okay if it's on the blue side, if it's on the green side. This is all going to get covered up for the most part, and you're not going to be able to tell. Um, we've talked about in the past that how you end up uh, being able to obtain that look of distance in a painting is that um, one of the ways is that as things get further away they get smaller 
And this is exactly true in this case. Now, right where these, where the ground and the, um, the mountains meet, it, it, it's a little bit more interesting if you can put something there. So we're going to put in some trees that are further away. So with wet paint right along that edge, you just put your brush right in this and you just kind of lift up. And you just want to get the hint of some tops of pine trees that are further away. Now I know on TV that this is going to look like little blades of grass and I always tell this in my classes too because at this stage that's really what it looks like. But when we put the highlights in, we're going to separate this out from where the ground is and you'll see that clearly it will look like the tops of trees that are further away. Now you don't want those to have a lot of detail because when you start adding detail then that makes them look closer. So you just want to get the suggestion of the tops of some trees and this doesn't have to go straight. This can be you know whatever you want this to be. You can have some that are a little bit taller than others. Um, it's, it's totally a whatever whatever happens I guess or whatever you'd like it to be. But you just put your brush right in that paint and just kind of flick it up a little bit just so you get those little tops. Now again when we put the um, the highlights in here the ground is going to come down and that's what will separate the ground from the trees themselves and it will make more sense. I'm going to continue with this blue and green and we're just going to finish up this meadow area actually at home if you're doing this you could really get away with painting almost the rest of the canvas in this because eventually that all will happen but I think just so it's easier for you to understand and follow I think we'll just take this in sections and I'm just going to reload and again remember those pine trees are going to be there but depending on how those come out there may be gaps that you see back behind there so I want to make sure that I bring that color all the way across again just to be safe now when we put those trees in it may totally get covered but at least you have that option because maybe you put the trees in and say I want that to look you know that you can see through there if that's the case then it'll be a good thing to overpaint this a bit and again don't worry about your brush strokes this is going to get covered up for the most part you're going to see little bits and pieces of dark but probably 99% of it's going to get covered. Now the benefit to that or the reason why you do that is that you know again one of the things that you can get depth and distance in is when you're putting the ground in is not to cover up all your dark. We talk about that all the time. Um, the other benefit to that is as you're applying your highlights sometimes you may hit your highlights rather lightly and so it tends to allow this color to come through your highlight which can um, give you different values of your highlight instead of your highlight just being one flat color. Um, you can get different amounts of intensity and brightness and you know and again those things happen all by themselves as long as you get this totally covered and don't worry about it a bit. Uh, let's go ahead and clean out our brush. Now we're going to stay with this brush and the sky is a little wet so we're going to see if we can get be able to do this and I think what I'm going to do is that you know I use um, gesso to paint with um, gesso as most of you know and maybe for those who don't know gesso is primarily a primer that you put on raw canvas now when you buy canvases or canvas panels from a store those are already primed with this there's always like two or three layers of that gesso that's on there so you're ready to go. But if you buy canvas on rolls and then you kind of stretch your own canvases on the, the wooden frame and things, you need to prime that with gesso. It's just kind of like when you're building a, maybe a wall at home and you have a drywall up there, you always have to put primer on that. That kind of gets the surface ready to accept paint. And if you think gesso is the same way. And gesso really is just a little bit thinner version of white paint. And I use it especially on television because of the lights and things it doesn't seem to dry out as much. But I'm going to put a little bit, oh, that's yellow, don't need more yellow. Let's grab some white. And because this white is a little bit thicker it may work a little bit better in that sky because again it's still just a little wet. So we'll see how this works. And I'm going to stay with that large flat bristle brush. Now how I like to do mount, or, uh, clouds mountains, is um, 
and I see people struggle with, with clouds a lot, and I used to do the same thing, is that people have a tendency, you want to go in there and pa try to paint the perfect cloud. And, and we all know that there's no two clouds that look alike, and they change all the time. So you can almost do anything up here and get away with it looking like a cloud. So you want to do these really loose and just kind of let it happen. So what I like to do is I stick the corner of the brush into some white paint. And then that corner is what I'm going to hit the canvas with. And then we're going to make the, the cloud from there. So we're going to come right back up to the canvas. And this looks a little bit drier than over there. So we'll, we'll put one over here for sure. And we'll see how the rest of that goes. We can always do this again um, later as we go. But I hold the brush like the Statue of Liberty holds a torch. So you kind of go like this. You don't want to do it this way because the end of your bristles are going to start creating little lines and strokes. But if you use the corner of the brush and the side of the brush, then you get more of a mopping action and you don't have all these strokes within that. So what I like to do is you got to always remember which side the light's coming from. And our light in this painting today is going to be coming in from the left. So the thickest buildup of paint you want to be on the sunlit side because it retains its color a little bit better if you have thicker paint. So, and for some reason when I do this, I always do a sound effect, so, so you're going to have to bear with me. I just kind of go up there and just kind of... And then I shape this <laughs> using just the corner of the brush and I just kind of mopping this around. So let's just say that's going to be our our shape. Now what you want to do is get a piece of paper towel and you want to wipe most of that paint out of your brush. So now we're actually going to a dry brush kind of a technique. So with most of that gone and while this is still wet, you want to go back in with the corner of the brush and just lightly blend out the bottom a little bit and start pulling this back. And of course I wiped out too much paint. Let me grab a little bit more and I'll be right back up. With that being wet, I need a little bit more. I'll be right back. There we go. Now you just kind of work that back, just lightly touching the canvas into where it just kind of fades, just like that. And that's really all you have to do. And just, the, again, the thing is just don't overwork it. Uh, let me mention something about clouds, too. I always say that if you pay attention to nature, nature is always your best uh, example or your best teacher. There's some times where you have to kind of exaggerate nature. Clouds are sometimes are one of those things. We've all seen when you go outside and you see it's a really big, fluffy kind of a cloud day, and you can see the entire cloud all the way around. It's just a really big, fluffy cloud. Sometimes in a painting when you do that, and what happens, you end up with a hard edge that goes all the way around it because it's such a big, fluffy cloud that it almost looks like it was just stuck on. So in painting, sometimes it's nice to kind of lightly blend out the bottom of it and the back, which would be kind of where the shadow part of that was. And that helps to set that cloud into your painting. So uh, sometimes you have to alter what real life is like sometimes to make it look good in a painting because, you know, you just got that as opposed to the vast um, sky. So again, you can still see a little bit of it, but the, the intensity of it is on the sunlit side and you can just barely see it, but it starts to fade away. Um, this is still kind of wet. We'll hit some more clouds a little bit later, maybe uh, next week when that's all dried up. So I'm going to clean out the brush. And I'm going to stay with this brush. These brushes um, are brand new. I'm, I'm having a, a line of brushes made and this is a prototype of it, and this is really the first time I've used them, so I get a chance to test drive these things out to see how they're going. So far, so good. This is a, a little wet, just a little bit. Um, so I'm going to start working on the first set of highlights, and I'm probably have to hit this a couple of times. Um, I'm going to go into straight yellow. And I know you at home are just kind of freaking out because you're like going, oh my God, yellow. But let me tell you about some about yellow. Really, any of the, the, the colors that start with the word cadmium, and typically you find that in yellows, oranges, and reds. Those are very, very transparent colors. Now, they look really bright on your, can or in your palette because there's a thickness to it. But when you apply it up on the canvas, you're putting a much, much thinner coat on. Now, what happens is because it's transparent, it allows the color that's underneath it to show through. So this does not stay this bright, I promise you. 
So back up to the canvas, remember we talked about our little blades of grass that they look like now. Now is where we kind of change that to make those into trees. Now as you put your highlight down, you want to drop down a little bit so you can establish we're not, we're only where the, uh, where the land is, but where the tree lines start. And that happens all at the same time. So again, I'm just getting to a chiseled edge back to the canvas. And I'm just going to start applying some highlights. You can see it's a little bit wet. See, but see how it doesn't really stay yellow very long. I'm just grabbing some more. And this will be something we'll have to work over a couple times. But kind of just put this on sparingly. Don't cover up all your dark. And again, remember that that could be behind and peeking through some pine trees. So you just definitely want to take it up over this side. I'm going to reload. I'll be right back. I'm just getting more yellow and getting it again to a chiseled edge so we have a nice little sharp edge to work with. But you can see how, again, this is just a little wet, but even if this was bone dry, this still would start turning to where it looked like a light green color. And you can put little hills and little humps and bumps in there, whatever you'd like to do. You could even make this a little hilly like that if you'd like to. But again, the secret here is just not to cover up all the dark. Because when you're talking about the land, the dark will trick your eye to think that there's a great deal of distance in there. And I'm just reloading again with just straight yellow. And I have a little hair there, which is perfectly normal for new brushes to, to shed a little bit. but they should only shed a little bit. They shouldn't continuously shed as you're painting. I'm just gonna grab some more. This is still a little wet, so it's kind of changing pretty quick. Now sometimes what I like to do, well, let's clean this out. And then we're going to go into just a very small touch of burnt sienna. What I like to do sometimes is to add a little bit of burnt sienna, just a small amount, into some green because there's going to be a lot of green in this painting. And burnt sienna kind of adds a little bit of warmth. Let's see how much this shows up. You know, it's not showing up too much. We may have to do this step next week. Yeah, it's still a little wet. All right, let's clean this out. We'll go to plan B. And we're going to put a little bit of highlighting on those trees that are in the background. With that, I'm going to take the small flat bristle brush. Remember, always get them wet before you stick them in the paint. And I'm going to go into some more of that yellow, and I'm just going to add a little bit in there chiseled edge again and chiseled edge is when you get a really fine little edge to paint with and that's by running your brush through the paint turn it over stick it into the paint again and pulling it through and you get that nice little edge and that's what we're going to work with we'll come right back up to the canvas now hold your brush handle way back on the back and this kind of helps promote a little bit of looseness and freedom but you want to go in and just lightly touch and put a little bit of highlights on these. Now just kind of skip around. Not every one of those darks are going to get highlights on them because the ones that don't will kind of appear to your eye to be like further back. So it looks like there's a thickness or a stand of trees that are back there. And don't worry about the bottom edge because we're going to have to re-highlight this anyway. So we'll straighten up all those bottom edges. And just I'm just going to reload, come back up kind of come in and just tap and again don't cover up all the dark you need some of that dark to show through there and of course this brush doesn't hold a lot so you have to reload a little bit more often than some of the other larger ones 
again, just light taps, and you're just suggesting some of these back here. Again, it's really important just to make sure you're skipping around a bit. I'm going to reload. I'll be right back. And you can see already, now these trees are, are bone dry. But you can see right there how they've turned to a light green color. Because I'm not applying very much paint. Plus it's allowing that underpainting to show through. So don't ever be afraid of yellow. You know, if you're ever painting anything that you want to be yellow, you have to do what we call layering. And what that means is you put on this layer, and of course it's not very yellow. I'm just going to reload, I'll be right back. And then you have to go back and then re-highlight, and then now you're putting on yellow on top of a lighter green, so it tends to stay a little bit more yellow. But sometimes you have to go and hit it three and four layers sometimes, depending on how bright you want things, before it really starts to look yellow. And that's just the nature of the beast, and you just have to learn that that's how that rolls. So that's just going to have to be part of the plan, depending on how bright you want it. And this is probably about as far as we're going to get this week. And perfect timing because we just kind of finished that up. I'm going to go ahead and clean this out. So get your painting caught up to this point. Next week we're going to come in, we're going to start working in the mountains. And this will be dry so we can put a little bit more highlights and you'll be able to see it a little bit better. Um, and then we'll get a good shot at uh, getting this thing going. Thank you so much for watching today. We really appreciate you viewing. Um, we'll see you next week.